What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for stopping in. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping in as well. Hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification too, if you don't mind. Let's get right into this video today. Please guys, please stop buying cold air intakes for your car. Now I say this as it pertains to a number of cars across the board, but specifically in regard to the Infiniti Q50 3.7 liter V6. Now I thought I'd address this topic today because it's been a question that has popped up probably over a dozen times in just the last couple of weeks, either through Instagram or the YouTube channel. Um, and it's a question that I see all the time. Which intake should I go with? How much power am I gonna get through with these intakes? And my answer is always the same. So I just thought I'd throw it out there today and try to address the topic and hit as many people as I possibly can with it. And my answer is slightly different with the G37 guys, um, but we'll talk about that uh, further on in the video. But as far as the Q50 3.7 goes, they, cold air intakes are just not necessary. The car does not really respond all that much better to colder intakes than it does just to simply adding some upgraded drop-in filters. There's a couple of options out there in terms of drop-in filters that you can go with and we'll talk about those as well but I want to kind of give some background for you folks. The people asking these questions seem to be relatively new to the car modification world so the video today is mostly for you all. Um, if you're very familiar with all of this stuff hit the subscribe button or hit the thumbs up and and leave your feedback in the comments below i'd appreciate that but otherwise this is for the new guys so i'll just quickly tell you what colder intake is what's the point of it um, we'll go over some prices um, also why this modification is so attractive to folks in the car uh, modification world also what are some alternatives available and i guess i'll throw in some numbers there and some examples of why i believe uh, what I do uh, in terms of staying away from cold air intakes. I guess some, some numbers, some examples to prove my point, right? To start out, what is a cold air intake? Well, we know that our car's engines run more efficiently and can make more power potentially with cooler air coming in. So you can kind of get an idea of what a cold air intake is by the name of the part itself. The idea is to bring cooler air from outside of the engine bay and get that air into your car's engine. So these intake systems try to do a couple of things. Number one is to separate that filter from the hot air of the engine bay, either with a barrier or a box of some kind. You'll see that in some of these examples. The other thing is that the tube of the intake system itself, or the tubes, are made out of a little bit different material, more insulative material. So they try to keep that hot engine bay from getting into the intake air itself as it makes its way into the engine. The intake tubes themselves are actually a little bit larger in diameter generally than the stock tubes, so it can bring in a larger volume of air. Um, in addition, the material of the filter is higher flowing than the stock paper filters you'll get as well. So the, the goal ultimately is a, a couple of things uh, for these intake systems. They bring in a larger volume of air, and that volume of air is kept cooler in general as it makes its way into the engine. So larger volume, cooler air, generally equals more horsepower. Now that seems fantastic, right? And there's a bunch of cars out there that respond really, really well to cold air intakes, even without a tune. But why is this modification so attractive to folks, especially folks new to the car modification world? Well, um, they are a couple hundred dollars, two, $200 or so for used ones, up three, four, five hundred dollars. So they're relatively inexpensive compared to some of the other modifications that you could do. Wheels and tires, a couple thousand dollars, a full exhaust system, a thousand dollars or more. Uh, you know, a tune itself is maybe a thousand dollar range. So in the grand scheme of things, a couple hundred bucks or a few hundred dollars doesn't seem all that bad. Another reason that they're attractive seemingly is that they're very easy to install, really any, anyone can do it, even uh, folks that aren't necessarily mechanically inclined. It's relatively easy to install these cold air intake systems. Um, so that makes it really attractive for people that are just kind of getting into this world, uh, something they can do easily on their own, feel a little bit of an accomplishment, I suppose. They're also attractive because manufacturers and retailers will um, tout these performance numbers, uh, 10, 12, 15, 20 horsepower increases by just installing these cold air intakes that really grabs the attention of, of people, uh, even experienced guys. The thought of getting 15 or 20 easy horsepower uh, is very attractive. The first and most popular one, the Takeda Intakes by AFE, about $454. 
Not bad looking. They claim 11 horsepower. See, perfect example. Another common one here is the AEM, cold air intake system. Again, not too bad looking. Doesn't do a great job insulating. $329. Get a little savings right now. Uh, but same, same claim, same information. But the one thing that you have to remember is the people advertising these numbers have an agenda, right? They're trying to sell the part. Um, and having these numbers be so attractive just benefits them. We see stuff like this advertised all the time, right? You're gonna get 12, 13, 15 horsepower from just installing these couple of intakes. It's been dyno verified, blah, blah, blah. And it's just not true. I, I mean, it, it may be true if you just simply took these intakes, installed them on the car, threw it on the dyno, you, you might get some additional horsepower. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, in combination, in particularly talking about the VQ37, uh, in combination with all these other modifications, if you put the car on the dyno, you're just not going to see that type of performance uh, output from the intakes alone. It's just not true. It's just not going to happen. My car is a perfect example of this. Check this out. So with just, with just some drop-in filters, some upgraded drop-in filters, and these were knockoffs, by the way, Speed Daddy drop-in filters from eBay for like $13, uh, $13 each, I think. I was able to make 333 horsepower to the wheels and 284 foot-pounds of torque. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Of course, that's in combination with test pipes, a custom two and a quarter inch catback system, and an Ecutech tune. Um, but there you go. The point is, I could not just go throw on a cold air intake system and all of a sudden make 345 or 348 horsepower to the wheels. It's just not going to happen. Again, installing these, these cold air intakes on, on their own, you might see a nice little bump, but in combination with everything else, you're just not going to get the performance numbers that they advertise. It's just not, just not going to happen. Another thing to think about is that these cars from the factory are tuned and calibrated to a certain amount of air coming in. So if you increase that volume, your car is going to adjust. It's going to try to adjust to that larger volume of air coming in, but it's not going to run as efficiently and effectively as it possibly can. It's just not set up to bring in that much air. So you might get a check engine light. The car might run funny. Ultimately, you're going to have to get a tune anyway to get the most performance out of these intake systems. So there's a lot more that is needed to go into it to get the car to perform optimally. You're not going to just be able to install these uh, cold air intakes and have the car run perfectly. Uh, so it's really a little misguided to think that you're going to be able to spend three, four, five hundred dollars, slap these things on, and and everything is good to go. There's uh, going to be some more expenses uh, to get uh, the car running to its fullest potential. I'm all about making gains, right, and, and increasing performance and increasing power and all of that stuff. But I'm also about practicality. I'm also about th doing things that make sense, especially financial sense. Here's my car again, again with just drop-in filters and a two and a half inch exhaust system. So just a little bit different exhaust setup. I was able to make over 333 horsepower to the wheels and 276 foot-pounds of torque. Again, with just drop-in filters and an exhaust. So here we're back at the AFE website. There's a couple of cold air intake options for you uh, from Takeda, $454. Whew. But here's the drop-in options that they provide. There's both a, an oiled filter and a dry. I would stick with the dry filter, uh, the dry S. Um, you don't have to worry about oil making it up into the intake tubes and messing with your MAF sensors. Um, but for the pair, and they're not bad looking, and they should fit and seal pretty well, um, but for the pair, they're less than 100 bucks. Um, I think, yeah, 97.3. 38. <laughs> I'm used to work. $97.38. They're on back order till middle of August right now, um, but it's definitely worth checking them out for sure. Now remember, it's the same material used in these drop-in filters that they use in the fil for the filters of your cold air intake. Um, so it's reusable, it's washable, you're not going to have to change them out. Somebody said, well, I'd rather spend a few hundred dollars on a cold air intake and not have to worry about changing the filters all the time. Well, you don't have to. It's the same material. So it's literally the same filter, a different shape, 
and put it in a different location. So you don't have to worry about swapping those out. So for a hundred bucks or less than a hundred dollars, you can have some nice, high quality, high flowing, washable, reusable, dry drop-in filters and still make some really solid numbers. There are a ton of videos on YouTube with Q50s and G37s on the dyno with different combinations of modifications. So you can get an idea of what kind of horsepower numbers they're making with these different combos. Uh, pay attention to whether they're, they have the intakes or they don't. Uh, and pay attention to their exhaust setups as well. Go ahead and take a look at a video I did not too long ago about the Z1 Motorsports 400 horsepower package. I give a few examples of different setups there as well, um, but here's a little example. I'll put a link in the description below to that full video uh, of that dyno pull, but that has still an intakes, and I'll just say the numbers weren't better. Again, car to car is different, dyno to dyno is different, day to day is different. Um, in terms of heat and, and potential, but overall, if you take a look through YouTube and you do some comparisons, you will see that the cold air intakes on the Q50s just do not increase performance that much to be able to justify the three, four, five hundred dollar price tag. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I, my opinion for the G guys, the G37 guys, is a little bit different. Um, there are some long tube intake systems that are available for the G37 cars that actually put the filters up in front of the radiator so they are truly pulling in some colder air. Um, there's some variations in the engine uh, as well in terms of ca different cams uh, and the header setup I believe is slightly different on the G cars to the Q50. So it allows that car to respond a little bit better to the colder intake system. So uh, for the G guys and the, the Z guys, I would say that it might be worth exploring some options there but for the q50 guys colder intakes overall not worth it i'll say it right here not worth it hopefully this video was a little bit helpful at least to some of you guys doing some shopping around um, i don't want to hurt any feelings or start any arguments if you already have these or you really want to go with a colder intake system by all means go for it if you're willing to spend the money um, they do they do perform but ultimately they're not going to outperform drop-in filters so again don't want to start any fights. Um, if you already have them, awesome. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. I've already heard from a few guys that had some of these uh, cold air setups and wished that they hadn't spent the money on them. Um, but nonetheless, uh, they, it's been proven kind of over and over through different dyno videos and you can, you can see the results for yourselves. Um, but they're just not worth it for the Q50 guys one more time if I haven't, if I haven't already said it. But again, I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll definitely get to them. Um, if you want some additional information, I'll try my best to, to provide that to you. But um, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for your continued support. I really, really appreciate you very much following along. Um, and I guess we'll see you in the next video.